Okay, so the treatment of hypertension is pretty complex, um, so I'm going to be really rushing through to get through it in uh, 15 minutes. Um, the number one goal is to reduce mortality, that's people dying, and reduce morbidity, so people getting sick, not feeling well, and that sort of thing. That's why we treat hypertension. Um, the hypertension itself doesn't have symptoms generally until it's very, very high. Um, like with most things, it's treated primarily by either drugs or lifestyle interventions. So, what drugs? Um, there's a few different main classes um, used in treating hypertension. And we have the diuretics. Diuretics. And we have the sympathetic nervous system I'm just gonna, inhibitors. And they're known by other names as well and we also have the renin angio tensin aldosterone system that's the RAS inhibitors and finally the other main one for is vasodilators and vaso meaning vessels dilate meaning dilate um, if people also have high cholesterol okay talking about diuretics diuretics um, how they work there's lots of different classes and they all work in similar ways they generally act at some point on the nephron to um, essentially poison its function so it doesn't work as well um, the nephron and the kidneys main purpose is to conserve um, well it's uh, main purpose is to filter um, and also to conserve salt um, and thus water so diuretics poison the function of the kidney in this way and actually make it worse at um, keeping on to salt and water so it gets rid of water so that's what they do, they de increased salt so that's Na plus excretion which in turn increases I'm just going to write water excretion or people might call filtrate or urine So that's you pee more. Yep. And if you're getting rid of all your water in your blood, not all of it, but a little bit of it, more than usual, that's going to decrease your total vol blood volume. And that decreases your peripheral resistance peripheral resistance which if you remember one thing that every medical student well, should remember is that blood pressure BP equals cardiac output and peripheral resistance You should always remember this. Blood pressure, cardiac output, peripheral resistance. Okay, so it decreases peripheral resistance, and that goes down, and that goes down. So that reduces blood pressure. So that's how diuretics work. Very simple. Get rid of fluid, decrease your resistance. Um, that you, ha you have less fluid, you're going to have less pressure. Um, less blood pressure, and then that's going to help you out. Um, Alright, next one is sympathetic nervous system inhibitors. The big players here are your beta blockers. And your alpha um, alpha blockers.
Okay, so they both work a little bit differently. Um, Alright, beta blockers actually decrease, their main thing they do is they decrease the sympathetic drive to the heart. No. When you adrenaline, all those things, it de adrenaline and nor nor adrenaline it decreases the effect of those um, so what does that do therefore because it decreases your heart rate and it decreases your contractility contract ill itty oh, and if you remember we go back here and we will think cardiac output what defines cardiac output it is heart rate times stroke volume what defines stroke volume um, cardiac um, contractility and venous return among so that decreases that okay so that's how your beta blockers work um, onto your alpha blockers now your alpha receptors are more into in your smooth muscle so they act on smooth muscle smooth muscle is in your arteries um, so by doing that by decreasing the SNS drive of your smooth muscle to the smooth muscles means they're not going to be constricted as much so it's going to cause arterial vasoconstriction um, sorry arterial vaso dilation or in the very least reduced constriction um, and that works in the veins as well I believe um, so what does that do that decreases your peripheral resistance so if we go over here is governed by blood volume is governed by blood volume and vasoconstriction okay so if so if we decrease that we decrease your peripheral resistance decrease blood pressure decrease morbidity and mortality okay so now talking about RAS blockers blockers uh, anything that block or inhibit the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system RAS so things that block this are your ACE inhibitors and your angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists so ACE inhibitors um, prohibit the um, ability of ACE to actually convert angiotensin to angiotensin 2 and whereas angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists uh, essentially block the receptors um, for angiotensin 2 so block its effects alright so what does this do well we've talked about renin angiotensin system before 
um, you know, the kidneys trying to, con when it's activated, the kidneys are trying to conserve water um, and conserve salt to increase blood pressure and all that stuff. Um, so if we block it, what we get is we get increase, um, we get decrease Okay, so if we block that, we get an increase in salt, an A plus excretion, and therefore a increase in urine output, which we know does what? It will increase your blood volume. which will in turn increase your blood pressure. The more blood you have, the higher your blood pressure is going to be. Okay, so what else does it do? Um, it will also, angiotensin 2 is also a powerful vasoconstrictor, so by decreasing it, we will also decrease vasoconstriction. Which has the effect of decreasing peripheral resistance. What else does it do? Well, angiotensin 2 is also a SNS, uh, sympathetic, it also activates the sympathetic nervous system. So if we decrease its effect, we decrease the sympathetic nervous system's um, activity, which will in turn affect the which um, we know the effects of sympathetic nervous system, so if we decrease its activity that's going to be less vasoconstriction and we're going to have a lowered heart rate and a lowered cardiac contractility contractility so that's going to be lowered and these serve to lower cardiac output. And we remember that blood pressure is related to cardiac output and peripheral resistance. So we can see that that will decrease that. Pretty simple stuff really. Alright, so what's next? Um, we talked about decreased blood volume, decreased vasoconstriction. So we also know that it will that the kidneys also, the system will also um, secrete aldosterone, which um, also, like we talked about before, will also, so um, angiotensin 2 also um, stimulates aldosterone. Aldosterone will um, decrease excretion. So if we get rid of it, that's going to lead to an increase in excretion. So, just like we talked about before, same thing. Um, we also have ADH, which um, occurs as well, um, which gets first. So if we get rid of that, then we reduce first. Uh, if we are drinking less, Often that means that that's going to be less fluid going in, less fluid going in can mean less fluid going out, and it can let mean less fluid overall, so that's also a decrease in peripheral resistance. So that's, so you can see that they actually do a lot compared to the others, it's a lot of different effects, and it works quite high up, which means that it's a drug of choice. Um, it's one of the earlier drugs that you're going to be giving these people. Uh, and that's the vasodilators. These cause vasodilation. You would have thought, and will decrease peripheral resistance, which in turn decreases. Here we go over there. Decrease that. We'll decrease this. Okay, so that's the drug toy.